Okay. So you all got a little alert in your screens. Great. So who is running this session? Sara de Miguel, Maria Martinez, and myself. Welcome everybody to our first ever Rachel Allen themed cook along. So what I'm going to be doing today. For just under an hour, we're going to be cooking together in real time the two fabulous recipes that Rachel Allen launched on his cooking recipe video two days ago, this Wednesday. The recipes were potato soup and a parsley pesto. So this video that was very well produced is six minutes long. And obviously the cooking times are cut out so the video is not too long. So today we're going to be all making those two recipes together using Rachel's video as a guidance and then stopping it and starting it again every time we need. One of the main things that we would love to do is when we finish all cooking, just uh, have the time of our thermomixes all together and make a nice thermomix concert. Something else that we're, you're going to achieve today is to learn some handy tips, also gain confidence when adapting your own recipes, because you see these two recipes we're going to be making and an extra bonus one that we also have prepared are not on cookie dough. So Rachel Allen and with the help of the recipe development department has adapted her, her own recipes to Thermomix. We have done the same with an extra one. So while doing that, we will be uh, giving you a lot of uh, extra tips and tricks. And something else that you will get out of this session today is if you still don't have a Thermomix, you will be able to actually have a lot of more information. Before we get started, I just want to give uh, the floor to my lovely co-hosts, Sara and Maria, do you want to say something before we get down to it? We are hoping that you also will have been fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, welcome everybody. It's the first time that we are doing something like this and we are so happy that 250 people have joined us today. So how cool it's gonna be 250 thermomixes working together at the same time. As the Cire said, you're going to have a lot of fun cooking with us. You're going to learn a lot of tips. But by the end of the night, we will be very happy if at least you learn three things of how to convert one of Rachel Allen's recipe or one of your own recipes to your thermomix. That's the goal of tonight, connecting, but also that you learned a lot from this session. And this yes. is also interactive. So if you have any questions, you can type them up in the chat and we will be answering them as they come in. OK? Exactly. Thank you, Maria. I was going to say that we would like to get started with the chat. If you can, please, as we get started with the recipes, write what is your favorite recipe, uh, your uh, favorite Rachel Allen recipe. You can write that on the chat and we will make a little compilation after this. And something else, please stay until the end. It's not a very long session anyway, because we have a special bonus surprise video for all of you that you are really going to enjoy. So let's get started. So my lovely uh, friends, Sara and Maria, are going to be doing the cooking. I'm going to be managing the session. So while they get started, I'm going to play the beginning of Rachel Allen's video. So bear, bear, um, bear with me for a moment. And while I'm doing that, ladies, if you want to make some kind of introduction to the recipe. So what we are going to cook today, as we mentioned before, is uh, first of all, the parsley pesto, okay? Mm, Rachel Allen used parsley, but you can do pesto really with a uh, rocket, with basil, that is the traditional one, also with the spinach or with the top even of the uh, carrots. If you buy carrots, the leaves of the carrots can also be using for the pesto. Rachel Allen uses pine nuts. Traditionally, pesto uses pine nuts too, but you can also use cashew nuts, walnuts, anything that at that moment you have at home. So don't think that you have to follow the recipe uh, to the to the tea. Sometimes you need to just see what you have uh, in your own fridge or in your own covers and just use those things. So don't be worried if sometimes you are missing an ingredient you, because you can sometimes skip it or you can sometimes swap it for something else. Okay. Yeah, and I think as well one thing that it'll be really good to share with everybody 
one of the things Rachel says is that you can preserve the, um, the pesto in this case for six months to a year. We will show you as well during this demo how easy it is to do that if you sterilize your own jars. For that, we are gonna be doing that while we make the soup. So again, it's maximizing, maximizing the use of your Thermomix. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the recipe might not say it, but you can substitute ingredients, adapt the recipe, or even, for example, use the Varoma, even if the recipe doesn't say it. Lovely. Thank you, ladies. Let's get started with the video. Hi, I'm Rachel Allen, and today I'm going to be making a really good potato soup, silky and smooth, absolutely delicious. And I'm going to be serving that with a parsley pesto. These are both really versatile ingredients. The parsley pesto is, of course, a little variation on the classic basil pesto, but it's so handy to have in your fridge for everything for, from drizzling over soups, you know, steaks, chicken breast, to putting in a pasta or even an omelette. And the potato soup is a brilliant one. It freezes, it's made really simply, but it can take herbs, spices, you know, it really can be mixed up as well. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the pesto. And this is made in literally seconds. I'm going to make all of these in the thermomix. So for the pesto, I have got parsley. I need for this 25 grams. You've got the wing scales in here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in 25 grams of Parmesan. And the parmesan you can just cut into little chunks like this. Um, but it's also really handy in the thermomix that you can actually grate the rind of parmesan. But for the pesto, I'm not going to use the rind, the inner part. So 25 grams of parmesan, one clove of garlic peeled, 25 grams of pine nuts. Now you can use other nuts if you like. You can use cashews, walnuts, hazelnuts, or if you wish, you can leave the nuts out. I always keep my pine nuts, by the way, in the freezer. I find that they stay fresh for much longer in the freezer. 25 grams of those, fantastic. A nice pinch of salt, there. And 75 grams of extra virgin olive oil. I find for the best flavor, extra virgin olive oil. So put that in there. Keep a little bit on the side, pop the lid on. And then put it on for speed six, um, for say, 15 seconds, scrape down the sides, and let's put it for 15 seconds there. Um, speed six. Yeah. Okay, so before Rachel Allen shows the final result of her recipe, there are a few things that uh, we wanted to explain in real time. For example, as you can see, she already has her garlic peeled and she just added it into, into the pesto. So ladies, what can you say about that? Who in this group peels her garlic with her Thermomix? One of the things on the thermomix, as you know, with the blades, one part is sharp and the other one is blunt. When you set up the reverse, no matter which thermomix you have, what model you use, you can set reverse. Well, what if I tell you I can put the full clove of garlic, two seconds per clove, we are gonna set the reverse and we are gonna put it to a speed four. And I'm gonna do it now, I'm gonna show you. What I do is I peel my garlic, I only have two left, as you can see here, the garlic cloves. I put it in a, airtight uh, jar into the fridge, they last for a week. So instead of peeling every time I'm gonna use it, in this case, the recipe only requires one garlic clove. What I do is I do, in this case, I'm gonna do eight. So I'm gonna put the eight as you see them here. Okay, so the whole skin. Uh, make sure that they are not very dry, okay? Sometimes if they are too dry, this trick will not work. You might have to put it a bit longer. I'm gonna put them in the Thermomix, close the lid, and just manually, I would be able to set it for two seconds. So remember when you're doing it manually, first time, then temperature and then the speed. So two seconds per globe. So in this case, I'm gonna put it, I have, I think it was eight, uh, no, six. So I'm gonna put it 12 seconds, no temperature. 
When I'm gonna use the reverse, remember if you are in the dial in the TM6, you need to go on the blades sign and change it and a speed four. So I'll move the dial all the way to four. I'm going to say that they have never used this trick before. And this is very handy if you're doing something, for example, like tandoori, or that you are going to need a, a garlic paste because you are peeling like, a, like three full uh, cloves of garlic, three full heads of garlic. So if you have to do that manually, it will take a long time. And the thermomix can do for you much faster. And then your hands don't smell garlic. Look at this. Can you see it? The whole garlic clove is peeled. And look at that. Okay, one thing as well to keep in mind, this is for garlic, but it also works the reverse very well for pomegranate, or if you have knots like um, hazelnuts, for example, and you want to get the skin off, is using the reverse. So this is my garlic peel. I'm gonna take it off. And while I'm doing that, Maria is gonna show us and we'll all do the pesto together. Okay. Hey. So so okay. everybody get ready. We're ready. We're ready. Exactly. <laughs> so I have already so, um, I have already weighed my parmesan, but if you haven't, we can wait for you. And remember, he has bring up the uh, scales, and you are going to need 25 grams of parmesan cheese. And remember to cut them like in squares, as Rachel did. So we are going to put this one. I might have a little bit more than that, but that is okay. Oh no, 20, 25, 24 exactly. Right? So then if you have put your Parmesan cheese, you just have to go to tier to bring your scales to zero again, and then you can continue adding the ingredients. So this time we are going to put pine nuts. So they are going to be as well, 25 grams of pine nuts. Maria, I'm just gonna say if some people don't have, uh, for example, the Parmesan and they want to do the vegan version, what I use is the yeast flakes or the nutritional yeast as well, okay? So that could be used instead if you want to make it vegan. That's good. In the same way that if you don't have uh, pine nuts, as I mentioned before, you can use other nuts, okay? Then you are also going to add 25 grams of parsley. So we'll bring the scales to zero again. And it's very light. It's a little bit less than, well, the, according to the packet, it was 25, <laughs> but don't worry. Okay, so then we also are going to need one garlic glove. Okay, so one minute, one garlic glove. And now I do bring my scales down. So it's good for this one to use a olive oil, a extra virgin olive oil. And we're going to put 75 grams of olive oil. What you can do, if you want to preserve it, you can put a tiny little, little, a tiny little bit less and then when you have your uh, pesto in the jar, just put a little bit on top. So that will help to preserve it. But the salt that is in the Parmesan and that you're going to add it, is also going to preserve it as well, okay? So everyone is ready with their olive oil. So 75 grams. And nearly there. Oops, a little bit more, it's okay. Okay, and now we come out of, uh, of our scales. You can put a little bit of salt, a good pinch of salt. And we are going to put our lid. So is everyone okay so far? Give me one second, I'm just putting the salt and I'm done. Okay, okay. <laughs> I follow one more again, we have, we have the 25 grams of Parmesan. 25 grams of pine nuts, one garlic glove, 25 grams of parsley leaves, and 75 grams of extra virgin olive oil. Yeah. Okay? So one is on. What we are going to do, we are going to set it up for 15 seconds, okay, at a speed seven. So we are only using the first die. You touch it, it becomes bigger, so you know it's the one selected, and you just choose 15 seconds. And then we press the last one, that is the speed at the blades are going to rotate, and we go to a speed six.
Okay, we are done here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it looks like. So you can see. So there is green all over the bowl. Can you see? So the trick now is to push it down, scrape it down towards the blade again, because there is still like a little bit of pine nuts not done. We push them down towards the blades, and then we put it back into, well, you don't need to take it out, but I did it so you could see. You can also, if you want to, scrape the, the leaf, and then we put it back again to the same thing. So are you ready? It's 15 seconds again. You don't need the temperature and a speed six. Okay, so my parsley paste nearly done. So I'm going to show you two tricks in here. So can you see it's all done? So one trick that you can do in order not to dirty your countertop and also not to waste anything is when you're doing sauces or when you are doing chutneys that you're going to put them in a jar, use the lid of the thermal mist without the simmering cup, put it on, place it on top of your jar, can you see? And then when you clean everything from your thermomix bowl, even if something comes out a little bit, you can recover. So you are not wasting anything. So I go again. So that is our first trick. Okay. So then when we are doing something like pesto or sauce, even chocolate, we don't want to waste anything. So what happened with that little bit that is stuck on our plates? So what we do is we put it back into the Thermomix. And you see there was a little bit left on the, on the leaf, so you're going to clean it, not to waste anything. But to clean our plates fully and not to waste anything, and later on be easier to clean the bowl. We are going to put the ball back, and this time we are going to do turbo. Just one second is plenty. So go back, use turbo. Remember that turbo is only giving you one second or two seconds. Select it. And I'm going to show you my blades, and you are going to see how clean they are. So then you are not wasting anything, especially if they are nice things. Okay, so I'll show you. So that's my blaze completely clean. Can you see? And then it's yes. very easy to recover or to collect every, all that extra bit to put it back into your jar. That's fantastic, Maria. And actually, for people that are using the turbo, one tip I would say is the arms get locked. Okay. So in order to unlock them, you need to uh, press the uh, home or the house little icon on the screen and then the, the arms will open and you'll be able to continue cooking. One thing with turbo, when you are using turbo, ensure the temperature in the bowl is not over 60 degrees. So again, all these tips, you can use them manually, uh, all these modes, but keep that in, um, in, in mind, okay? So when you're using the thermomix, another thing to have into account is that you have to be clever. So for example, I have just done my pesto, there's a little bit left there. So in the recipe that we are going to do today, the potato soup, it says to clean the bowl, but you don't really need to do that. You can actually continue doing a soup, any soup. And this little bit of pesto left in the bowl is going to give, to give flavor. You can do the same if you are doing, for example, bread. You can do the pesto first and then a bread. Or if you are doing tomato sauce, you do the pesto first and then the tomato sauce. So it will give an extra bit of flavor. It's really nice. So this is my bowl and I'm going to put it back to the second recipe that Tara this time will um, let us know how to do it. And that's my so if, Yes, yes, look at mine as well. <laughs> we love it already. So if everybody has got uh, the pesto out into a jar or maybe in, the, in one of the bowls, as Maria very well said, and you're gonna see this when we do the video now with Rachel, she's gonna show us how to do the soup and she's gonna use that pesto for garnishing and decorating the, the plate. So uh, Desiree, will we show them how Rachel does the soup the first few minutes? Yes, before that, as I have said in the chat, 
I'm going to remove all the spotlights and all of you that have some pesto, it doesn't have to be in a jar, yeah. it can be inside the thermomix. Just show it to the camera because I'm going to take a screenshot of everybody. Just let me for a second remove all the spotlights and that way we will all be in the picture. It smells really nice in here. <laughs> yes, I love it too. And I have never made it with parsley, I have to say, until Rachel did it. I've done many other okay. versions, but not this. Yes, I'm in gallery view, yes. Okay, so is everybody ready? Oh my goodness, there are so many screens. Oh, wow, I love this. Okay, so your best smile that. because I am going to take a screenshot. You know, I'm going to remove myself because I don't have any. There you go. Okay, one, two, three, screenshot, smile, yay. Thank you. <laughs> this is so I, I love the way Helen was suggesting wild garlic. That's a fantastic, fantastic tip. And in that case, you might not need to add the, the garlic because of the, of the flavor and also the color is very vibrant. So that's a fantastic one, Helen. Uh, thank you for sharing that. And if this Brilliant. is still in season, but if you have a wild garlic with the leaves of wild garlic, the pesto is beautiful as well. You don't need to add garlic in that one. I learned that one in the bad way. <laughs> It's just a, it's a little bit stronger. But that one is free. You can go for a walk, exercise, at the same time, collect your garlic leaves to make your pesto or your white garlic, and it's for free for you. Okay. Beautiful. Before we continue with the recipe, I'm Hi. going to throw, to throw, no, to launch, my goodness, I'm translating from the Spanish, sorry. I'm going to launch a poll that I have prepared especially for this part of the session. Uh, I'm crossing my fingers because I don't know if it's going to work, but I think it will, okay. Bear, bear with me. Let's launch a poll. No, it's not working. Goodness me, I knew that. Okay, we will deal with that later. Okay, so I'm going to continue with uh, the uh, continuation of the video. That looks really good. Mm, divine. Okay. So now, that is the pesto. Um, I'm just going to put it straight into a bowl because this is for drizzling over the soup. However, if you want to keep this for months and months, and it will keep well for months, um, put it into a jar, a sterilized jam jar, and cover it with a layer of extra virgin olive oil. And that will prevent the air from getting in and which will cause it to... Apologies. We have had a bit of a problem here. Air of extra We're back. olive oil. And that will prevent the air from getting in and which will cause it to go off. And stored properly like that, in smaller jars rather than, you know, one huge jar if you're making a big batch. But it'll keep well for up to a year. So good. And now to make the potato soup. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the potatoes into the bowl of the Thermomix and actually just blend them just for three seconds on speed five. So 475 grams of potatoes that you then peel, chop up into rough pieces. And... Okay, they are chopped. Into the bowl here. I like to chop these first and then these go into the onions after the onions have had their initial sweating. Otherwise I find that if the potatoes go in from the very beginning they can get a little bit starchy and the soup won't be as silky and smooth and gorgeous. And then I need to put in 25 grams of butter. I like to use salted butter but you can use unsalted butter. So and also 150 grams of onions that I peeled and cut into quarters. And a nice good pinch of salt. There. Right, so again, back to speed five and blend the onions with the butter just for three seconds. So I'm going to cook the onions now for five minutes at 100 degrees, just on speed one, the spoon stir. Okay, lovely. So the onions have sweated with the butter. And now I'm going to add in the chopped potatoes there. And 
and the stock. I like to make my own chicken stock and you can make chicken stock or a stock paste in the Thermomix. So you can use a homemade stock or you can use a stock cube if you like. And if you're using a stock cube, use 500 grams of water with the stock cube. I've got 500 grams of chicken stock in here. And there. Put the lid back on. And then on again now for 10 minutes. That's at 100 degrees again. Just to cook the potatoes really nice and slowly and they'll be so silky like this. And one. Lovely. So we are going to leave Rachel Allen's soup cooking and we are going to replicate it ourselves. So ladies, are you ready? Before we yeah. go, Tango was asking if you can share the photo, the sire of the pesto. Yes, yes, I will do it now. And someone else was asking how to clean the blaze. So how you clean yes. the blaze is using the turbo. So if you have a TM6 like this one, you just need to slide, sorry, to the other way. And you can see here turbo. I need to put the lid on top of the washing won't let me. So just press turbo and the screen will change the turbo and just press the turbo sign and turn your knob. <laughs> That's all. One second, we'll clean the blades, no problem. And then to work it out, just go to the home on the top and your, the, and your arms in the thermal mix will open, okay? Perfect. So if everybody is ready and they have the potatoes ready, we are going to show you how easy it is to chop the potatoes. Why Rachel did this is so the potatoes are really small and it will be really handy then for cooking. Now, if you had them a little bit bigger like I did, that's okay too. You don't have to chop them if you don't want to, but if you want to cook it, and in my case, I'm going to be making it as well with the help of the friend, it's better if they are in small chunks. So I'm going to start by putting the scale. So for those of you that have the Thermomix uh, 6, or if you have the 5 or the 31, go and press on the scales and we're going to use a total of 475 grams. Again, it's a soup. If we were talking about making uh, maybe breads or baked, baking, stick to the amounts, but when it's a soup, a little bit more, a little bit less, doesn't matter. So let me add all my potatoes into my dirty bowl from the uh, pesto. So I'm going to have fantastic flavors. All I'm going to be doing is three seconds SPE five. And if you were converting your own recipes, how do you know for how long and what, what uh, speed? Go to your book, the one that came when you bought the Thermomix. At the back, there is a section called resources in uh, both for TM5 and for TM6. And in the 31, I don't know, I don't think it is there, but the other two have it. It will tell you exactly the amount and the speed to use depending on what you are cooking. So in this case is three seconds, a speed five. Okay. Once it's all chopped, we'll put it back into the thermal server, which the thermal server for those of you um, that don't know it is uh, from Thermomix Australia, they have the, um, the, the design of it and the copyright. But now this month, the CD, will we tell them what happened since today? It was a great news that is available now. Yes, we're so excited because from tomorrow at noon, anyone that wants, uh, uh, now it's called Thermomix Serving Bowl for free. Well, the name is Thermomix Serving Bowl for free, it's extra. Um, just have to, purchase a TM6. So any person who purchases a brand new TM6 from tomorrow, the 29th of May at noon, 12 noon, until the 30th of June, will receive automatically together with their TM6 shipment, a former thermo server, now Thermomix serving bowl, and a set of serving utensils, lovely wooden big cutlery that they are added just to the order. You don't need to pay anything extra. And what is a Thermomix server bowl? It will keep your food either hot or cold for up to three hours. 
And it's very handy as well. Some of you probably have seen in Cookie Do if you have done the yogurt recipe. Some yogurt recipe is done in the bowl, the natural yogurt. That's a fantastic recipe from Cookie Do Australia. But there is another version that is made inside the thermo server, inside the Varoma. So which of your friends can you contact? They can get the thermo meat and you keep the bowl maybe if you make a good deal with them. So now yes. that I have my potatoes ready, Everybody have them. Let's get on to the onions. An onion, again, when you're adapting your own recipes, I wouldn't look into the amounts that much. I have an onion. I'm not gonna leave a couple of uh, grams of the onion in the fridge, put the full onion. Again, it's handy if you cut it in, in quarters. Sometimes I just cut it in half and put it into the thermomix. And in this case, Rachel Allen used butter. I have to say, I'm not a fan of butter. But this time I'm going to be very good and I'm going to follow the recipe and put the butter. Uh, probably a lot of you know this, but when you are using the scales, instead of putting it straight into the bowl, what you can do is set the scales while having the lid on top. So then you know exactly that you are not going too much. And if you do, you can remove it. So in my case, I'm going to put the 25 grams of butter. I'm going to weigh it on top to make sure that I haven't gone over. Yeah, I have exactly 25. If I have put too much, I could remove it and try again. And what we are just gonna do now is gonna be three seconds at a speed five. So let me put it in. We're gonna chop everything. If you were to add oil, uh, that will work as well really well. So three seconds in this case to an a speed five. <laughs> Fantastic. So is everybody, after doing that step, chopping their onions and the butter together, make sure that you push it down, okay? Uh, so it's close to the blade. Uh, so it's gonna start sauteing. When you are adapting any recipe, my advice would be look at a similar recipe, either on Google or on Thermomix, uh, Cookie Do, and look at how you do it. Always the soups will chop, then will saute, then will cook, and then will blend. And when you get the recipe that it will be like a template, it will be like a guide that you can use. You can adapt it then depending what ingredients you are using or also uh, what the time and the temperature. So in this case, we know what we are gonna be doing is just cooking it. So always when you're cooking, it's gonna be around 100 degrees. And because of the amount, you're gonna need around five minutes, okay? And this is gonna be any soup really. The sauteing will be five minutes at temperature 100. So let me set my thermomix to five minutes, 100 degrees. And then the speed is gonna depend. In this case, the soup is gonna be blended at the end. So it wouldn't mind that much, but the way Rachel did it was like a really nice sauteing. So I'm gonna go for a speed one. If you have chosen a speed, a speed a spoon, it would have been also good. So when you are just sauteing, it will be like when you are on the hob, very gentle, 0 0.5, a spoon, 0 0.5 of one, okay? So let me put it to one. So no more crying when you are chopping your onions and you saw how fast it was like 150 grams of onion and it was done in two seconds. Another little tip that I will use is uh, if you are sauteing onions, especially, uh, I will take off the, the measuring cup because then what happens, can you see the small steam coming out? So then you really saute and you're not cooking the onions in its own juices. So the result, the end result is much better. Okay. Actually, it's good that you say that, Maria. I'm going to put a video in our cooking journey. Uh, one thing I have learned this week is, and I knew it, but I never really paid that much attention. When you are boiling, when you are cooking and the steam is coming out of the thermomix, it's always coming. If you look at the measuring cup, you see the way it has a pointy part the steam will always come from that. So if you are cooking and for example, you have the area underneath it or behind it is maybe covers, you can move the, simmering, uh, the measuring cup to the side. So then the steam will come to the side instead of going to the front, okay? For protecting, if you have covers, maybe it is in the, in the kitchen. And remember, if you are removing the measuring cup, using the bottom of your pan, the pointy part, go to the bottom and that way very easily, let me do it like this very easily pressing with the hand and lifting it up because the two uh, pointy parts will be in a straight line. So it'll be very easy with the pump, lift it up because I've seen a lot of you that you start rattling and you don't know how to remove it. That would be a good one as well. Yeah. 
One thing that we are going to use in this recipe is a, is a vegetable stock in this case. So it's really easy to make your own vegetable stock and you can put it in a glass jar in the fridge, but you can also put it into ice cubes and freeze it. And you really need only two ice cubes for any soup or any risotto. Or I have these little containers because my ice cubes are full of them. And it's very handy because you know exactly what they are in them. And also you can use, for example, the peels or the part of the broccoli that you normally will throw out. You can cut in small pieces, put it in a plastic bag in the freezer. And then you can use that as part of the vegetable that you are adding into your uh, stock. So then um, it's, you, know, you are not wasting so much and it's much more sustainable. Okay. June is asking, uh, which one is better, the chicken or the vegetable stock? Uh, I would say it depends to your taste. Yeah. The fact that you are using, in this case, potatoes, in my case, I would have added a vegetable. It's true that Rachel uses the chicken. One thing I'm going to add to what Maria just said is, if you are using vegetable stock cubes, Bosch, okay, and no judgment here, but I would invite you to go and get them from your covers and read at the list of ingredients, because I have this one here that I bought in Aldi's uh, last year. And it's interesting when you look at the ingredients, okay, the vegetables in, that is contained in these vegetable stock cubes is 4.5%. If you have not made the vegetable stock cube like Maria, I'm gonna ask the CDA if we could show them what the recipe is like and what exactly contains what Maria has in her hands. You have the yes, chicken as well, Maria. I know because there are different colors. This one has carrots and so it's a little, it's more colorful and the chicken is much more um, light in color. You will just see, it will be another color. And if you use a fish stock, it will be another color. So it's easy to distinguish them. You don't need to label them or anything when they are in the freezer. I put this one back, <laughs> okay? Okay, so I'm going to share my screen for just a couple of minutes to show you how do you find that. I know that a lot of people is very, very familiar, but not everybody is. So this is, let's wait until it's loaded. There you go. So this is my cookie tool. This is in my computer. How do I find a stock paste recipes, for example? So in the search engine, you just need to write stock. And if you press intro, these are all the options. Some of them are duplicated because I have several filters activated. So you have the recipe for the States, for Australia. Uh, that's why it's um, repeated a few times, but you have vegetable, you have chicken, you have meat. You also have beef, as you can see. And this is one of my favorites lately. I've discovered it thanks to Sara. Mushroom, mushroom stock paste is really lovely. Um, and also there is a salt, free chicken stock paste. Some people were saying, oh my goodness, it has so much salt. We also are catering for that. So many, many options and you won't have to buy stock paste or rather stock cubes that are full of chemicals anymore. Yeah, click on the first one. I want to show them the list of ingredients because I just think it's amazing when you see what goes in that versus what they have at home in terms of percentage. So if you look at there, what the CDA is showing us, look at the list of vegetables, lot and lot of vegetables, a little bit of wine or water, uh, oil and salt. Salt will be what will preserve it. So again, if you don't make your vegetable stock, look at uh, how easy it is. It's only two steps, blending everything and cooking it. And then like Maria very well said, you can store it either in ice cubes or I have jars and I'll show you now how I sterilize my jars. If you want to reduce the salt, what it happens is that in order to preserve it, you just have to freeze it. So then you don't have to put so much salt because that's what I do. Uh, how much do you put, Maria? How much do you normally put? Less, I can't remember now from the top of my head, but how much salt in there? It's not as, I don't really put as much as the one that is, uh, because I cannot take that much salt, so I don't have to okay. put as much. And if you will have it in the jar for a long time, that's maybe you will need the salt. But if you're going to freeze it, it doesn't really matter because it's okay. going to be yeah. preserved okay. anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, a good point. I, I, I normally uh, keep it in the fridge, so I, I'll keep that in mind for the next time. You can also make a vegan version without Parmesan cheese and use, using the nutritional yeast we were mentioning before. And also somebody was saying the other day, oh my goodness, I don't want to use wine because you know I want to give it to my children. It doesn't really matter because the alcohol of the wine is going to be evaporated. But anyway, if you don't want to use wine, as the recipe says, you can use wine or water. 
Fantastic. So my onions are ready. What about yours, Maria? Will we go and show them the next step? Mine are ready, yes. So Fantastic. So let's add the potatoes that we had preserved. In this case, I have them in my thermal mix server. I'm also going to add the stock. You have the frozen one. I have my jar. So I think it's like a big uh, tablespoon. That's what I normally put. And I have to say, when I add the stock, then I don't really add any salt to that recipe because my stock has a lot of salt. So I tend to just uh, then season it when I'm gonna eat it. And usually I don't need to, to put anything. So I have the potatoes, the stock. In this case, I'm gonna add 500 grams of water. So I'll set the scales and add the water. And here is where you can adapt the recipes. This is gonna make from four to six portions. If you wanted more, you could add more always keeping in mind the maximum amount, depending if you have a TM31, TM5 or TM6, might depend, might vary, but look at the bowl and in the side of the bowl, you have what is the maximum amount. You can go as far as that when you're cooking, okay? So in this case, I'm only gonna go with what Rachel did. I'm being very good today. I'm following the recipe to the tea, which normally doesn't happen, but today I'm uh, sticking to, for the purpose of the demo. <laughs> Okay, so 500. And all we need to add now is if you want the salt and pepper, and as I was saying, I'm not gonna add salt to mine. Uh, you can choose, and I'm gonna just put a pinch of pepper. And one thing I really like, I don't know if you saw it in the video, Rachel added it, but then at the end, she went and tasted it, and she was like, oh, you know what? It needs a little bit more, so add it afterwards. Okay, in this case, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna move it to my friend. So I'm gonna place the, bowl into my Thermomix friend because we have a surprise for you. But one tip I'm gonna give you before I move it to the friend. We're gonna be cooking it 10 minutes, 100 degrees at a speed one. I'm gonna adapt Rachel's recipe a little bit. And instead of doing it at 100 degrees, what I'm gonna be using is my lovely Varoma because during those 10 minutes, I can do something else. In this case, as you saw, I had my stock base, my pesto, in jars. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the different jars that I have at home. I'm gonna be sterilizing them by placing them upside down on the Varoma. The steam is gonna come from the bottom of the Varoma all the way to the top. Also, if instead of sterilizing the jars, you wanted to make maybe some dessert with your ramekins, or if you wanted to make uh, maybe another dessert or cupcakes, you could also have them in, close the lid, and start cooking, or what Maria is gonna show us, she has a different tip for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook extra vegetables. That uh, sometimes, this is a good tip because when you are doing, uh, as uh, uh, Sarah said a while ago, uh, a soup, you might want to have a, a big quantity. So a good way to add extra vegetables to the soup that you're cooking in the bowl is to put extra vegetables in the varoma. So later on, you can liquidize everything together. And if you have a lot of quantity, as we were saying before, for safety, you cannot go over half uh, over the liter when you are liquidizing. So what you do is you liquidize in two ways or in two tones, we'll say. So then you can have yeah. much amount of soup, okay? And another trick or another tip that I will say, if you are doing vegetables, it's good to wet them a little bit because that is going to help the steam to spread evenly and they will cook to perfection, okay? Yeah, the only thing is the recipe as a hundred degrees. We're gonna put it at a varoma temperature because that way it's gonna create that extra kick of steam and it will go all the way up and steam the vegetable. Now you tell me, Sarah, but how do I know how long do I have to put it for? Is the recipe I'm adapting it? I don't know how to do it. The book I was talking about, the green book, the basic cookbook or the simple ideas in the TM6. At the back, you have a lovely section called resources. You will have there all the different vegetables, how long it takes. Sometimes keep in mind, if you are doing broccoli like Maria, maybe on carrots, more or less the same, but if you are doing courgette, they will take a lot less. So in that sense, what you could do is start with putting the broccoli at the bottom. Remember you have the second tray, don't have it in. And when it's only maybe five minutes left, put the courgettes, place them into the aroma, and then you'll have both the courgettes and the broccoli steam at the same time. So let me set my friend to put it to the 10 minutes that I'm going to be cooking this. 
The temperature, as I said, is 100 degrees if you are doing it at home and you are not steaming vegetables or varoma if you are using the varoma. And in this case, I'm gonna put it at a speed one. And now we have a surprise for you. So as we are cooking our, in my case, uh, our soup in the, in the thread, I'm going to do something else in my Thermomix. So this one is not a Rachel recipe. Well, actually it is a Rachel recipe that we have adapted ourselves. We are going to do a cocktail, okay? So are you ready, Sarah? Because we are going to do different types of cocktails. Yes, yes, I am. I am ready. Can I'm I really show? excited. I'm really excited. Can I show? <laughs> so the yeah. recipe is taken from this book, Rachel Allen, Entertaining at Home. I really, really love this book because, well, you see, I love it. I have <laughs> dusted it off now because, as you know, in Ireland, the lockdown is kind of coming to an end. From the 7th of June, we can have people one household indoors we, we now can have people outdoors so we can entertain again so there is a recipe in case you do have the book is on page 143 and it's called watermelon margaritas now we are very creative people so we are going to even that even then make two different variations of this recipe don't worry as a follow-up to this class we will be uh, sending this recipe adapted to Thermomix to everybody. The picture is just absolutely delicious. So ladies, go ahead, show us. So I'm going to be drinking the, because it has a little bit of alcohol on myself, so I want to drink it tomorrow. So what I have done is I have half the recipe, so I'm not going to do all the quantity of cocktail that the recipe has. And I'm going to use strawberries. And what are you going to use, Sarah? I'm gonna use watermelon. I love watermelon. Okay. I love it <laughs> so you can adjust it to whatever. Do you want mango? Do you like mango? Why not? Any fruit you want to, it's nice. Yeah, so in this case, as Maria said, the recipe that the Rachel has in the book is making four to six. We have half everything. When you are cooking with thermomines, uh, having making half of the ingredients doesn't mean making half of the time as a rule of thumb and it depends on the recipe each recipe is different for me the advice i will give you is less is more so always start with having less time that half maybe see how it is check it out and then you can go and do it again so let's show them how we have adapted the recipe it's a very simple one really easy to start so then you can build the confidence and start moving to things that are maybe more complicated or that are more outside of your comfort zone so maria will we do it okay so i'm going to use my strawberries 225 grams and i'm going to use the watermelon so i put my strawberries then the next ingredient it says uh, the use of a lime so i have already squeezed it and i have it here so i'm putting it into my thermomix bowl yeah me then, too sorry ladies one second how many degrees is the soup again it's 10 minutes 10 minutes at 100. 120 degrees well 100 and if you have the varoma you can put it at 120. yeah thank you and, and speed one isn't it speed one yes okay thank you Okay, so going back to the important things, the cocktail. So now we are going to use a little bit. Yes, I just put a one a spoon of uh, caster sugar, okay? You go in, you can add it. I think if you use nice fruit, you might skip the sugar. But I just- That's what I, I was gonna say, so my okay. watermelon, I had a slice earlier. It was very, very sweet. I'm not gonna add the sugar. Also, Maria is using lime, I'm using lemons. Uh, you could also use oranges. Uh, I find, for example, the other day I was making a cocktail with pomegranate. The pomegranate was a little bit bitter. I did have to add honey, for example, instead of, of sugar. So again, you can do uh, different things. And Sarah, no, we haven't added the, the milk yet. The milk will go at the very last step with the soup. So we are in the step three. The last one will be the blending with the milk included. So the ice cubes now, I'll put it as well. Put it yeah. hand, hand. I have full of ice cubes, you know, the, the more ice cubes, the, the cooler it will be, no problem. So that's up to you how many you put in. And in my case, the recipe says tequila. I'm going to keep, skip that one, but I'm going to put Cointreau. And I'm going to put 25 <laughs> grams. Fantastic. Here you could add Cointreau. jeans, you could add a bit anything of Anything you have at home, really, anything. Oh, that's what I yeah. <laughs> So that's why I said that uh, I had to be good. I couldn't do big quantity on this one. Right, something like that. 
And that's it. And then what we are going to do is you put your lid on. Very simple. So we cannot go to the bars, but we can bring the bars home. And then phone your friends and have a cocktail on a, on a, on a, on a call, for example. Although very soon we'll be able to have the cold text in the garden. So that's nice to see friends again. Yeah, one thing I did it. the other day was actually a smoothie, adding bananas with the watermelon and the own yogurt. I made my own yogurt with the thermomix, with the fermentation mode. And I have to say it's delicious and it tastes like a cocktail that you could add something else if you if you want it as well. And the color is, is fantastic. So let's go and make the cocktail. So it's one minute and then a speed of five to ten. Progressively you move the your dial or you can just put the function if you are in the tm6 of blending whatever you prefer Blend. exactly let's go with you do the one to ten and i go with I the, the one to ten and you can do the blending okay perfect we'll do that we'll so show them how to a little do bit noisy so the noise will go so maybe the tire can tell of you something in the meantime Yes, I'm here and I'm going to try and do what I was trying to do before, but I have discovered that for that, I need to leave the session from my phone. So bear with me, I'm going to leave, but I need my computer, hang on. I'm talking from my computer now, but this is still not working. Goodness me. Okay. I was going to throw a poll uh, about how often do you um, adapt your own recipes? Uh, the poll, for some reason, is not working. I thought that it was because I was opening the session from two different devices, but I don't think that's a problem. So please, could you write in the chat how often do you uh, adapt your own recipes? Is it uh, every week? Never once a month. We will be interested to know that. And I'm going to connect again from my phone. Yeah, because if that's one thing we want to support you with. We want to know what is the most challenging thing that you find when adapting recipes. A lot of you have told us that you love Rachel. You have their books, her books. So how come are you doing it? How often are you doing it? We would like to know. And if, we, if there is anything you find that challenging and we can support you and help you some tips, it might be uh, something that you need more support or the whole community. Maybe we can all help each other and uh, it will be great. So my cocktail is ready, Maria. What about yours? You are muted, Maria, Maria. Mine is ready too, but I can see from here that I should have used more ice cubes that I put on to make it more liquidy. So it's like, a, I'll tell you now in a minute what it is. Look at my one. My one taste looks really, really good. <laughs> yes, you can all, I, all I need now is... Watermelon has more water, so it was perfect. So if you're doing the strawberry, you need to put a little bit of water or more ice cubes. But it's really yeah, if... What I was saying earlier, I think someone was asking in the chat, uh, Aden, uh, I was doing it as well with yogurt. So if you wanted more like a smoothie kind of look with the yogurt, if you make the natural yogurt in the bowl, uh, I highly recommend making that recipe in the TM6 with the fermentation mode before you go to bed, get up in the morning, and it's a wow factor when you open the bowl and you see the fantastic yogurt and it lasts for a week. You can keep some as well in the fridge and that could be like your starter. So then the following week, all you need to do is buy the milk and do it again. I'm gonna put a, an umbrella to my uh, cocktail. <laughs> I am more prepared than me, I don't have an umbrella. I, I'm very prepared for today. I'll be having a, a cocktail party afterwards. <laughs> Maria and Flora, can you come forward with your cocktails? I'm going to take a screenshot of you too. Okay, there you go, one here and one there. Okay. I feel like I'm on holidays now. <laughs> your best um, smile, one, two, three. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Somebody is complaining because we didn't tell them so they can't oh. make the cocktails. Next time, oh, it was a surprise. You can now go, once, once the class is over, you can go and do it straight away because it's very simple to make. With yeah, any with any fruit really. Again, if some of you are starting adapting your recipes, I can see a lot of people have said that they have adapted recipes very often. If some of you have not adapted recipes, and this is gonna be the first time, start with something like the soup or a drink or a smoothie to get used to the different temperatures, the different speeds and build the confidence. And then once you go that, 
move to the next step? Are there something more uh, challenging or something that might be a little bit more time? Because that's one of the things we want to know as well. This is the first time we are doing something like this. Rachel is going to be doing more videos. Will people be interested in doing these sessions when it's getting the recipes are going to start getting more uh, advanced? Is that something you would want us to do? Because at the end of the day, we're doing this for you to support you, to share, to have a few cocktails together. Uh, so we would like to know uh, if anybody would be interested in running these maybe once a month, we can do them and uh, connect with you in these sessions. Oh, Lovely. Yeah. So oh, now you need, need to blend the soup. No, the, no yeah. you need to, to blend the soup, don't you? No, we need to yeah, add the last step. First. We need to add milk first and then to blend it. So that's why I change it from my thermomix friend into my thermomix. But one yeah, I'm thing gonna do that. very important, if you don't want to have a facial when you're opening your baroma, you should always open it away from you. And you see the same, otherwise it will hit your face. So always open it away from you. So this is my broccoli already cooked. Lovely. So um, is it, can you show us the broccoli, Maria? Is the broccoli cooked? Yeah. And I have Brilliant. my jars. I have my jars as well. Look at them. They are sterilized. Wow. Bottles. If anybody have if anybody have babies at home and they want to do the baby bottles, that will and work the as well. And the dummies, really yeah. like the dummies as well. Yeah. Okay. So, ladies, if this is okay with you, while uh, you are blending the soup, I'm going to play the last minute of Rachel Allen's video. Is that okay? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Right. One, one second. We'll tell them if people are cooking, and now is when you add two hundred of milk, and you put them one minute. Again, from a speed five to 10, if you have the TM31 or the TM5, or blending if you have the TM6, or, or manually if you want to do it with the TM6. Lovely, I'm going to play the video. Okay. Okay, and now lastly, add in the milk. Lovely. 100 grams of milk going in. Put the lid back on again. And now blend it at speed 10 for one minute. Oh, that looks gorgeously silky. Lovely. So give it a little taste. Mmm, mm, doesn't need too much pepper. You can season to taste. You should. It just needs that little bit. Delicious. Pour some soup out now or just reheat it later. Look. That does look good. Really comfortable. And then a lovely little drizzle of parsley pesto. If your pesto is a little bit thick, it'll depend on the parsley. You can always add another little bit of extra virgin olive oil to fill it out. And because the parsley pesto has got good punchy flavor, you don't need a huge amount. That's kind of good. And there we go. That is my potato soup and parsley pesto. For just $67, you can make as many videos as you want and you never need to pick up a camera or Okay, my soup is ready and it's going to look as beautiful as that soup. Look at that. Yes, wow. so it's mine. So okay, it's mine. Okay, cool in time, okay. everybody. I'm going to have this one in here. Let's see if we can make it nice. As she says, you might need a little, to make it a little bit runny if you want to have the nice design in the place. I will give it a go. I'm gonna put it in my thermo server as well, so I'll keep it and then I can put my bowl to be pre-washed. And if everybody have seen the new upgrade on the TM6, have you noticed the pre-washing now has changed? That's a really good uh, way now to um, get your bowl. much easier. Yeah. Can you see it? Oh, look at that. It's going to go over, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna do mine too. So we have soups. Does everybody have their own soup? And let's show everybody to get the soup. So we can do maybe a little bit of a 
comparison with uh, we all make this beautiful because one Sorry. thing Rachel somebody's asking again how to blend the soup could you please remind the ladies okay so how to blend the soup you can do it in two different ways you have the tm35 you just select one minute and then you just select your uh, dial of the speed dial at five and then slowly you move from five up to ten gradually but if you have the tm6 remember that you have the blending option here so you just press blending and then you just add the time that in this case is one minute and the thermomix will do it for you. You don't have to be doing manually to be going gradually from five to 10. So that's the way to do it. But you can do it either way. Yeah. Yes, okay. So let's get our soups and we'll show everybody because one thing we want to so, say, okay, so if everybody gets, get everybody get their soup, we're gonna show you. Um, because uh, Rachel is very, very happy that we met today and she has a message for us. Desiree, will we show them? Oh, you're, you're mute, Desiree, you're mute. Sorry, I, I'm working on, 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 the, on the special video, sorry. <laughs> I don't have it handy, but I will find it, I will find it. What I was okay. going to say is in the meantime, can we please take the selfie with uh, all the soup? Yeah, the soup. Is everybody Perfect. ready? Anyone needs another couple of seconds? Yeah, I think one was uh, still blending, so maybe might need a bit more time. Just let us know, ladies, when you're ready. Yeah, oh, yeah. we'll do it. If everybody gets their soups, let's show. Yes. Gallery view. Okay. Let's take, I, I love this moment. Everybody, is everybody ready with the soups? Just put, oh, wow. The, it looks amazing. Fabulous. Brilliant. So your best smile forward and let's take this amazing picture. Just bear with me for a second. Did everybody get the picture from the pesto? Yes, I put it in the chat yeah. twice. Okay, oh, sorry. I'm going to take my camera off. There you go. So one, two, three. Yay. Perfect. Thank you. Let me put it <laughs> somewhere because it wouldn't be the first time that I have actually lost a picture. So yeah, let's bear with me for a second. Okay. Yeah. And now is the special bonus track that we were telling you before. Let's send this to myself. There you go. So I know that some people thought uh, some of our uh, customers and friends were telling us that they thought that actually Rachel Allen was going to be with us today. We're sorry for the confusion. I mean, we never said that she was going to be. It was a Rachel Allen inspired uh, session. And I mean, I, you know, we do have the Rachel Allen book, but well, you know, maybe. Maybe. All, maybe. She okay. might be here with us. Who knows? Okay. Yeah. Can you see my screen? And you'll even oh have my goodness. All Hello. The free feature updates we offer. I still have features, the which is YouTube typically somewhere. now. Okay. So oh come on. Can you hear it? No, you can't. No, no, dear. now. Can you hear it? Mm, play now. Okay. Let's see now. Bear with me. Share sound. It's not very long, but it's quite exciting. Okay. Tell me everybody if you hear it. Oh, I know why you, goodness me. I have so many technical problems. Just bear with me for a second. <laughs> okay. Is this now? Okay, I think I'm, I'm spoiling the surprise a little bit, but uh, <laughs> now. Hi, Hi Sarah. Sarah. How are you doing? I hope you're really well. well. I, I hope you're going to be doing a little cook-along with your Thermomix. 
Hi, Sarah, how are you doing? I hope you're really well. I hear you're going to be doing a little cook along with your thermomixes. That is brilliant. Um, please do get anyone to tag me on Instagram. That will be fantastic. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the results. Thank you so much. Bye. So how about that? We did Yay. have Rachel Allen after all. Woo. We did. We have her. She's traveling from Dublin to Cork. So we asked her and she said she would love to be here this evening, but she couldn't make it. Instead, she will very kindly send us that video. And we are doing a competition. We are going to be raffling three books dedicated personally to three of you from Rachel Allen. All you need to do is take a picture of your pesto and the soup and you need to um, place it, or sorry, post it in social media, tagging Rachel Allen and saying that you attended today's event and the hashtag Rachel Allen Thermomix. We are gonna be able to track who does it. And between all of you, we are raffling three books and they will be personally dedicated to you by Rachel. She's gonna be doing it next Wednesday and we will post it to you so you'll get it. So who is up? Who is going to do it? Who is going to take the picture? Now that you have the food in front of you, as soon as you close Zoom, go and take the picture, go on social media and post it and tag us and tag uh, Rachel. And oh, actually, we will announce, when we will announce the competition, we will give them until Sunday and we will say the winners maybe, on Monday. Maybe Monday or a little bit more, yes. So we can yes. have a look at all your posts. But there is something very important before everybody leaves. Uh, there is a special hashtag that you need to use because otherwise we won't be able to see your posts. So what we're going to do basically is we're going to look for all the posts. I'm doing it from my phone because I can't find the hashtag in my computer. So hashtag is Rachel Allen, Allen Thermomix. Thermomix, yeah, exactly. So just post your picture on, social, on your social media and use the hashtag Rachel Allen Thermomix. We will perform a search and we will raffle those three signed books among all the pictures. How about that? And I want to say thank you so much, Sara, for getting that video because it's thank really you. cool. The video was especially for you <laughs> and for everybody in this uh, cook along. So thank you yeah. so much. Before we go, ladies, you want to say any goodbye message? Maria? Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> so I hope you have <laughs> time. I said you were going. Sorry. I hope you have you enjoyed this session. And as I said, if in the future you want to have a look at other sessions, or if there's anything in particular that you would like to cook along with us, or even that you like that you like us to cook for you, and you can see how it's done, just let us know. We are here to help you and support you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. It's a fantastic to have the community. We all support each other. We are all there in our cooking journey on the Facebook group that we have. So it's fantastic. If you want, we can do these sessions again. But the most important is remember one tip that you learned today that is going to support you to start adapting your own recipes. What is that going to be? Yes. And before um, we finish, there was a comment here that the potatoes were not cooked. OK. If that ever happens, just cook for another five minutes because some potatoes are more watery than others. So yeah. the drier ones are harder, so they need more time. So if you make this recipe, you cook your potatoes for 10 minutes and it's gloopy and it's not cooked, just put it for another five minutes and it will be perfect. Okay. So thank you and everybody. For, we will follow yeah. up with everybody and we'll send you the recipes the step by step, don't worry. And we'll also yes. send you the special recipe, so don't worry. Okay, and now go and enjoy the soup before it gets cold. So okay. we'll see you soon. <laughs> bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.